Hey guys, what is up? We have got another double integral to do. We want to actually find the area of a cardioid. So this shape here is r equals 2 minus 2 cosine of theta. If you haven't checked it out already, check out my video on plotting polar curves to see how we can plot a cardioid like this. But let's say we want to find the area of the cardioid. The cardioid is this shape looks a little bit like a heart depending on the coefficients here it can change you know its shape a little bit but this is pretty much the shape it's going to look like it can be rotated of course if we use sine theta or something like that but this is pretty much the shape of a cardioid and we want to find the area of this cardioid and we're going to use polar coordinates to do that we're going to use a double integral so the region of integration is r right here and we want to find this area bounded by this cardioid so we just want to make a note here that the area of a region is just the double integral of 1 dA. So if I'm adding up a bunch of area elements and then taking the limit as the partition goes to infinity, so the number of part points in the partition goes to infinity, the, the essence of a double integral, if there's no function to integrate here, if it's just 1, then I'm really just summing up all the area elements. So a double integral with an integrand of 1 is going to give us an area. So once we have the understanding conceptually of how to get the area, it's pretty straightforward actually. Just set up the bounds and then we can integrate and get our area. So let's look at the solution. The solution is first of all we got to figure out the bounds. Well theta was given as going from 0 to 2 pi. R is going to go from the origin so R always goes from the origin out to the curve. In this case, it's 2 minus 2 cosine theta. So the bounds for R are 0 and then 2 minus 2 cosine of theta. So those are our bounds. Now all we got to do to find the area is do the double integral. So we got the area is equal to the integral 0 to 2 pi, then the integral from 0 to 2 minus 2 cosine of theta. And then we always have the dA in polar coordinates, r dr d theta. So r dr d theta. Now we integrate r first. We absolutely have to do r first because there's a theta function in the bounds of the r integral. So we absolutely have to do r first. So let's go ahead and do the r integral. The theta stays the same, 0 to 2 pi. Now we get 1 half r squared, r goes from 0 to 2 minus 2 cosine theta, d theta. Now I plug in those bounds. Well, plugging in this, 2 minus 2 cosine theta, we're just going to square that whole 2 minus 2 cosine theta. Plugging in r equals 0 is just going to give us 0. So this is going to turn into the integral from 0 to 2 pi, 1 half times 2 minus 2 cosine theta quantity squared d theta. Now what we've got to do is we've just got to simplify the integrand, integrate cosine, and we'll have our area. So let's simplify the integrand, let's square it out, multiply by one half, and then complete the integral. All right, so if we foil that out, we're going to get one half, and we get four minus eight cosine of theta plus 4 cosine squared theta, d theta. Now two of these functions are pretty easy to integrate, but this last cosine squared, we have to do something before we can integrate that. So let's simplify one more time before we actually do any integration. 0 to 2 pi, multiply by 1 half, so we get 2 minus 4 cosine theta, plus 2 cosine squared theta, d theta. Now this is pretty straightforward to integrate 2, we just get 2 theta minus integral of 4 cosine is 4 sine plus, so those are going to go from 0 to 2 pi, plus integral 0 to 2 pi, 2. And to integrate cosine squared, we have to remember that cosine squared theta is equal to 1 half 1 plus cosine. 2 theta. So that's the trig identity we're going to use to integrate cosine squared. It's going to turn it into 1 half 1 plus cosine of 2 theta. 
So that gives me a 1 half, 1 plus cosine of 2 theta, d theta. Now we can integrate that, hopefully pretty straightforward. Let's integrate, well, plug in the bounds at least for theta over here. So get 2 times 2 pi minus 0. Just plugging in the upper bound and then minus plugging in the lower bound. Minus 4 sine of 2 pi minus sine of 0. Both of these are 0, so that actually doesn't add anything to the integral. Plus, and now I just have the integral from 0 to 2 pi, 1 plus cosine of 2 theta d theta. So this is equal to 4 pi plus, and now we integrate 1, we get theta. Integrate to cosine of 2 theta, we get 1 half sine of 2 theta. Now those are going to go from 0 to 2 pi, which is equal to, let's see, that's going to plug in the bounds for theta, get 2 pi minus 0 plus 1 half sine of 4 pi minus sine of 0. That's exactly what we get next. Evaluate these again. Sine of 4 pi is 0. This is going to be 0. This is going to be 0. So this is really just 4 pi plus 2 pi, which is 6 pi. That is the area, units squared, whatever they are, area enclosed by the cardioid. So this is the area enclosed by the cardioid. That's how we do it.